Um, so first of all, I'd just like to thank you all because, you know, I think the opportunity to socialise and mix within the sector is actually a rare luxury and it's been so, so nice to just feel positive about my country <laughs> and the world again by being with you and having some shared conversations which have lifted my levels of optimism and, and hope for the future. So that's been good. Um, I've written down some names of people that have made me feel that way but I won't embarrass you. Uh, but thank you, uh, it's really helpful. Secondly, the power of partnerships, which is kind of like a nice power of partnerships, you can talk partnerships. I suppose it's the, the opportunity for achieving our ambition through collective action is what I actually mean. And I think it's the only way we're going to achieve our shared ambitions. And I think that the shocks that we've experienced over the last few years, few months, last decade, uh, maybe longer, have really begun to force us um, to reconsider how we work together. And I think we're starting to do that, but we've got a long, long way to go. One of the problems about being in a market, capitalist, free market society is that we're, in many respects, forced to compete. And actually, we have to go the extra mile and proactively find ways to collaborate and, and support each other and have our eyes on the, the big prize rather than the short-term wins that any of our organisations might, might seek. My third thing is the power of leadership, and there are many, many leaders from all sorts of communities and all sorts of organisations in this room, but leadership is really, really important right now. Uh, it's probably more important than it's ever been, and I love going around the country and meeting people that are stepping up in difficult circumstances to take on those leadership roles. And there's many here, right? And leaders come in all shapes and sizes. They're not always the chief execs or the leaders of councils, although there are some wonderful people fulfilling those roles, roles too. Actually, there are leaders in communities, in families, in neighbourhoods, in, you know, even if they're not given the title, there are people doing incredible things. And I, I wonder really how we can get money to those people and to find those authentic people leading communities, leading neighbourhoods in a much more efficient way than we have done in the past. Um, and then the, the final contribution for me really is around ambition. And there was a couple of things. I've recently taken on the Foyer Federation, which works with homeless young people. Um, and then I was in a network shop earlier on, and it was talking about advantage thinking. And I just thought, we need to be more ambitious for ourselves and what we can do together. And we need to frame our thinking through that advantage thinking lens. So, so often we hear about the things that we can't do, the deficits in our sector the lack of capital, or not the right forms of investment, or the fact that we're blighted by public policy, or the fact that all sorts of reasons why we can't do what we want to do. And actually, if you look in this room, or if you look in the social economy, we are powerful. We have power. We have assets and advantages, and we can bring those together in a collaborative way and really make a difference, whatever is happening in the world outside. And, and that's really what I've learned, that we ourselves have power that we need to utilise much more effectively. And I guess, you know, the reason why so many of us have travelled, um, you know, through hail, wind and, and, you know, the fear of snow tonight, is because this stuff matters. And, and this is the conversation that we need. Let's have more of it, let's have it more frequently, and let's bring more and more people together, because that's, in my view, how we will genuinely create a really, really powerful movement.